Healthcare is multifaceted, including many demographics from rural to inner city medicine. Inner city can be defined simply as the older, poor, and densely populated portion of a large city. Specifically here in Nashville, this area typically faces social and economic problems. This unique environment encompasses inner city medicine. As with any branch of healthcare, inner city medicine brings unique challenges and benefits. Today we're going to walk through the life of a PA serving in inner city medicine here in Nashville, Tennessee. We will discuss specific benefits to working in this field as well as challenges for both the patients and the providers for inner city populations. Common medical concerns related to this population will also provide us with a better understanding of the patient care provided in this unique environment. We had the opportunity to speak with an inner city PA in emergency medicine, Javier Rodriguez at St. Thomas Midtown Hospital, and he was able to walk us through the day-to-day -day life of an inner city medicine PA. So give us a brief overview of the day-to-day -day life working here as a PA in the ER. Yeah, so one of the reasons I enjoy doing what I do is because of the variety, like every day looks a little bit different. You know, we just came out of a room and we, a baby was delivered, you know. So yeah, it, it varies every day. Um, a lot, lots of what I do involves uh, lots of orthopedic uh, injuries, but that's that's what I like about uh, emergency medicine in particular. That um, and the way somebody described it a long time ago. If you think about internal medicine, you know how these guys have to know a ton about a group of uh, or a subset of uh, diseases. Well, we have to know a lot, but not as in depth, right? Because what we're trying to figure out is, is this person going home or are they being admitted? And if they've been admitted, somebody smarter than me is gonna take care of them. So number-wise, in a 12-hour shift, I mean, I think we probably on average see like uh, three patients per shift. So I would say seeing the, you know, a 30 to 40 patient per 12-hour shift is pretty common. Some days um, that doesn't happen, some days is more than that. Um, do we get overwhelmed? Yeah, it happens. Although Mr. Rodriguez's experience in the ER can vary greatly day to day, he expressed great benefits and rewarding outcomes from practicing in this field. What are some of the benefits to inner city medicine? Well, you get to help a lot of people that really need help. I had, I had a, I'll never forget this, I had this, this homeless lady that came here and a lot, a lot of those folks don't really need a ton. They just, you know, they, you know, if it's cold, they just need to get out of the cold. If it's raining, they just need to get, and, and so, but a lot of them will develop these kind of, um, like blisters and because their feet stay wet, you know, and I had this lady that came and kind of the same thing. She had some kind of foot complaint. So well, she's sitting on the stretcher and I get her so, well, let me see your foot. I'm gonna take her sock off and she puts her foot on my on my leg because that's just how I examine them. And she, I remember her saying, like, this is why I come to this hospital because you guys treat us like human beings, right? Like, like I'm, you know, no gloves. She's putting her foot on, on, my, on my leg. It's not like, like, you know, somebody with like leprosy that like nobody wants to like be around, you know? Um, yeah, so I get to do this stuff like that. Although there are benefits, there is a desperate need for change in this field associated with its challenges. Mr. Rodriguez addressed these in the interview as well. What are some of the challenges faced in inner city medicine? Um, so one of the things that I like about this, this hospital is that we're a non-profit. So we see everybody. We don't turn anybody away. But um, the people that we discharge home, you, know, you have to kind of take into consideration of like, well, if I give you a prescription that costs $300, I might as well have given you nothing because you're not gonna be able to afford it and get it, right? So that person's probably gonna get worse and it's probably gonna come back. Uh, or, or, or maybe they won't come back, maybe they'll go somewhere else. So I think that's, that's one problem that I see. Um, but also, you know, we get like um, lots of people from um, other countries, you know, that are, that are uh, uninsured, you know, like we get dialysis patients, we have two right now. You know, that they come and they can't, I, I can't even imagine how much it would cost to go to a dialysis clinic 
and pay out of pocket three times a week for the rest of your life. So they don't, and they come here, and we see them, and they just come back, you know, two or three times a week. So, uh, or, or if, you know, if you somebody that says that, say, let's say they have some kind of cardiomyopathy and you need a cardiologist, you know, well, how in the world do I get that person to go see a cardiologist? What improvements do you think could be made to inner city medicine as a whole? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't. I, you know, obviously, nobody knows because we still have a problem in the U.S. There's so many people that are uninsured, and um, but but I think we have to come from that, like just to develop places where the government and the state can help. Um, you know, even like we have the dispensary of hope. You know, like we can like people donate. Uh, I said people like corporations, say Johnson Johnson donates medications, you know, and then we, we, they give free samples, uh, or they have medicine that reduce costs. You know, I, mean, I think it would have to come from from stuff like that, where the, the government gets involved in um, giving clinics, uh, you know, tax breaks, I guess, or uh, the state just helps, um, yeah, just subsidize the cost of healthcare, you know, so people can pay, um, I guess, you know, just less for visits and less for medications and just, uh, but at the same time, get have access to good healthcare, mm -hmm. not just average healthcare. I mean, this is the USA, right? We shouldn't have people get like mediocre care. Right? Some other broad inner city medical challenges we encountered in our research work, racism, low literacy causing a communication barrier between patient and provider, competing demands between personal and economic barriers, lack of physician resources, poor access, no health insurance, comp competition with private insurance payers and provider access. While there are many medical problems prevalent in inner city medicine, the most common areas encountered are obesity, heart disease, diabetes, asthma, cancer screening, and HIV. These medical problems typically stem from the socioeconomic disparities associated with the population of inner city medicine. Working in inner city medicine has a unique day-to-day -day life. We hope that by highlighting both the benefits and challenges, you have a better understanding of this incredibly powerful area of medicine. So why do we care? Justice. Compassion. Respect. Stewardship. Caring for the vulnerable. Human dignity. Mago Day. Um, St. Thomas does like their free healthcare type thing that they do at the Municipal Auditorium downtown. And they, they do like screenings, like uh, dental exams, they pull teeth, they do all kinds of stuff for like people that, and, um, that, that can't afford it. And I went there, this is last year, and I got to, you know, there's that's, that's a station where you actually get to like wash people's feet, you know, just like Jesus did. And, uh, Uh, but even like, like uh, you get to like wash people's feet and like clip their nails, you know. Man. On, so they'll, I yeah, I'm sorry, I turned it off. Oh, I was like, I was like, oh, that's annoying. Okay, but it actually helps you. All right. <laughs> You're starting right now, you know that, right? Oh. And provider access. While there are many medical problems associated prevalent, whoa. <laughs> Shush. Oh. Oh.